um year. But it doesn't really matter when you get the job. Just keep shooting the job. The only one that matters, please, can you please like my video? Please like my video. I beg you. I tell God, beg you, like my video. I should be resting, you know. This is this time. I should be resting. This is Friday. I just came back from work, made dinner for my family. Everybody is happy. I said, let me come online and answer questions. Please at least like my video, if not for anything. For the sake of humanity, like my video. I beg you. I take God beg you, like my video. Thank you for those that have liked my video. If you haven't liked my video, please do. Thank you. Thank you. Someone with EU passport, I'm coming. Let me finish this thing. Tony, I will answer your question. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, some people are still doubting and said, how can that person get? I'm laughing. Someone that is applying for 491, which is um, state or territory sponsored, is arguing with someone that applied for a different visa and said, this boy, at, at some point I blocked him. He said, I've been looking for nominations since I did my skill assessment. How come this person got it? I said, do you know you apply for different visa? When is employer sponsored? It's quicker because you already have an employer. Okay. The employer just take your document and say, bring this person for me. I am paying for this person to come over and work for me. Does it make sense? The visa process is quicker. When you do independent visa, which is state or territory nominated, you are queuing like other people. You queue. You are in a, 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 a you do expression of interest. You are in a database. They push all of you in a database. So it's a survivor of the fit test. When the states do their draw, they pick according to the category. If they are picking from your occupation, if you are selecting from people that have higher score, if you are selecting from people from what, what, whatever, highest experience. So whatever criteria the state is using to do their draw, you pray to God or pray to anything you believe, universe, water, ocean, Allah, God, Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. However, if it's 482, or one A six or one six one A six, which is also employer sponsored permanent resident visa. It, it it is quicker. The employer is saying, "Bring this Mr. Smith for me. This is the job I've given to Mr. Smith. Bring him for me. Immigration will bring the person. Fine. Let's take questions. Please drop your question. Hello, hello everyone. Bukola. Daniel, Crypto, Tony, Fate, Don, Tolu, Edit. Thank you, guys, my YouTube people. I tell my Facebook people that my YouTube people are my homies. I can never forget them. I always come here to answer your questions. I started with you guys, and we are rolling together. People share my videos to where I don't even know. Every time I get my analysis, I see shares. Please continue to share these videos. Continue to share my videos, and I thank you, and I bless you. And I will always be answering your question. As long as you are dropping it here on the comment section, not on the DM, Jenkins will make sure I come back and answer them. <clears throat> Thank you. What about someone? I'm fine, Edith. How are you? Edith, how are you? Onyinye, Kedu? Kedu, Pwano? Onyi, Kedu, Kedu, Kedu. What about someone with EU passport? Can I just travel and look for job over there? Boom! Yes. You can travel. Tony, what you will apply for, the easiest way for you to come over. However, you meet a hiccup along the line, but I want to tell you something. If you have with if you have EU passport, go online and apply for um working holiday visa. I think it's a six. No, I can't remember this is visa number. I've made a video here on this channel on that visa. It's called Working Holiday Visa for people from EU. There is a list of countries. Um, countries, Okay? <clears throat> so, you will find your own country. When you say EU passport, I don't know whether it belongs to a particular country or just all Europe. Okay? Whether you have European passport or belongs to a particular country. The list of country passports is listed there. Okay? Then, <clears throat> you apply for the visa called working holiday visa so when you come here you are allowed to work these are the people that work all those jobs they're telling people in africa i say it's not for you guys like a farm job 
or there, there is so many job you can do okay from there this has changed okay because the government knows <coughs> their and that visa is renewable too you can stay in that visa for long then you try to find a visa that will settle you okay i noticed that there are so many dharma agreements for occupations a lot of occupations that are not even skilled occupation or skilled occupation but when i check those dharma dharma agreement dharma agreement is that agreement the employer sugar employer made with government because there is scarcity of skill in that occupation for example the meat industry they have dharma agreements whereby they can bring bonus you know those people that are bone meat and stuff it's all skilled okay but for their requirements, you must have worked in Australia for at least one year. So, Tony, people like you that come on working holiday visa or people on student visa that have worked on those visa for one year can apply for them because you already have Australia experience. Does it make sense? I'm giving you an example on how to settle. Unlike before, when the only way people can settle on working holiday visa is either they go for studies or they marry someone. But now... They have so many visas they can rely on after they got Australia experience via working holiday visa because you are legally working. Like you are not hiding. Government say you can work on that passport. Does it make sense, Tony? I'm giving you consultation, free of consultation, Tony. However, if you want it more clearer or one-on-one, -on -one, you can come for consultation. I can take you and show you that visa and how to apply for it. Okay? And possible, we can talk about settling and stuff. However, it is possible I'm giving you information, go online and search them, okay? Working holiday visa. <coughs> then, you, okay. oh my God, congratulations. Oh, congratulations, Diala, Uka. Oh my gosh, God bless you. You just arrived. I just arrived Brisbane, Australia on 189 PR skilled visa. Guys, this is one of us. This is one of us. He just arrived, Brisbane. Okay? This is it. This one is not magical. Is here. Is here. Okay? Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. You've done well. You're PR holders. Please... <clears throat> Make sure you check Centerlink. Go get you a Medicare. Register for Centerlink and see if you have any. I don't know whether you came with children or you alone. Okay. And see if you have any government benefits. Please register for Medicare. You can do that online and grab your Medicare card. Okay. All right. And see if you if you are eligible for healthcare card because you are new. I don't know whether you're already working. You grab your healthcare card for um for deduction in so many things like lesser fees for so many things <clears throat> france yes tony france is there go grab your working holiday visa okay yes it's there <clears throat> thank you Oni. thank you gm every oh good <laughs> gm good 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 morning is it good morning it's night I mean, Western Australia is nice now. People in the East should be about two hours or three hours ahead of us now. Hello, Ma, please. Someone with no experience and wishes to relocate. What is your advice, Ma? And no much for study route. Oh, no much. There is nothing. Adenike, if you don't have any experience. Okay, Adenike, let me ask you. For other countries you know, if you don't have experience, you don't want to study. Possibly you go with um <clears throat> with visitor visa. Is it? Yes. Let's talk about that visitor visa. For Australia, for you to get a visitor visa, you will have... Let me start from for you to get a visitor visa before we talk about what you can do with visitor visa. Okay. For you to get a visitor visa in Australia, people are getting it. Don't quote me right. Quote me right. Okay, people are getting visitor visa, but so many people that have told me they got their visitor visa, there is one thing in common. Okay, <clears throat> they are working with a known company in their country. They've worked for that country for, uh, for that company for a long time, not like less than six months or one year. Okay, <clears throat> and they get good payment. 
company is paying them well. Or they have business, they're business owners, and their business is doing well. This is called home ties. Does it make sense? It means that, remember, when you are coming on visitor visa, the plan is that you are coming to stay and go. Does it make sense? Good. <clears throat> so the person that's going to approve your visa need enough information to say that, yes, Smith is coming. And because Smith has all this responsibility back wherever Steam is living, whether it's your home country or country of residence, that there is evidence that you are going back. They will approve it. You do not need anybody to invite you. Actually, many people <coughs> that have contacted me with um, tourist visa refusal are people with invitation. Once you are within the work age and you have someone here that is inviting you, you'll be denied. This one is proven. You will be denied because it is assumed that you are going to disappear. That is your plan to come and stay permanently. But if you come on your own, have your itinerary, plan your holiday, give them all the information, have a good home ties, you will get your visitor visa. Now, let's talk about what you can do with visitor visa. Bukola, I'm answering your question. Yes, it is. In September, we should be in our springs, but it's still cold. I think it's global warming. But we're coming out of it. During the day, it was hot. In the afternoon time, the weather was, it wasn't cold. In the morning, it was cold. In the afternoon, it wasn't cold. This night, again, I need to grab this and cover myself. So that's the worst trigger weather. It's like this. It doesn't stay one, one thing for the whole day. Like one. So it fluctuates. Okay. All right. So now you've known how to apply and the evidence they need and why they deny people. Let's talk about what you can do with that. Bukola, I'm still answering your question. When you say you don't have experience, you don't want to study and you want to migrate. For other countries, possibly you go with visitor visa, go there, you disappear, or you go there, you get married or do whatever. Now, let's back to Australia. You have gotten your visitor visa, you come to Australia. You cannot walk. You can do study only for three months. Okay? They said that's, that's close off. And if they put no further stay in your clause, you are on your own. No further stay means that there is nothing that can change it. However, they say that, um, what did they say again? They say that on exceptional circumstances, they can change um, that condition of no work and stuff, whereby there is a circumstances that you cannot return back home, or maybe you return back home, something will happen to you, or will happen to your family, or, you know, all these things. Yeah, so they can take that clause off. Are you ready to tow that part? That is the thing. So, Bukola, at this stage, I don't have anything to tell you because study visa for people that don't want to come via work visa. Work visa is either you get a job in your skill, in your occupation, or you go through the independent 49118189. Okay? I hope I've answered your question. Best city to settle in New Zealand. <laughs> okay. Why do you ask? Have you gotten your visa or you are looking for something? I would let me give you the list of um cities in New Zealand. Okay. People think just like they always think that Sydney is Australia um, um capital city. People always think that Auckland is but is not. Cities in New Zealand. Yeah. The five biggest city in New Zealand is Auckland, Christchurch, Wellington, and Hummington. Okay. So, and okay, there are even more. Okay. So, go make your research and decide which one you go. Many people stay, most people I see stay in um, Auckland. And Christchurch, I, I think I have two people that stays in Christchurch. I don't make contact to tell people to go visit anybody, okay? I'm just telling you. Yeah, those people are from Nigeria. People stay in Auckland because it's the biggest. It's the biggest, most populated, okay? 
Then the second most populated is Christchurch. Most migrants are in Christchurch. Then they have Wellington. Wellington is another one. The third um, largest. Okay. So <clears throat> decide. Now let's take another question. Hello, Ma. I have obtained positive skill assessment from Amma for nursing support worker. I have been looking for. Yes, Pascal Uchen. If you listen to me, I, I don't know when you obtain that. If you have obtained it in the past, if you are obtaining it currently, I would, I would have said, if you listen to me, you wouldn't have. <clears throat> because that gap has been bridged. You know one thing with visa, when visa comes out, just like when UK nurses were coming through New Zealand to Australia, I told someone, I said, you better be quick. This will close. You see this pathway? It will close. The more reason it will close is that because Australian um, nursing board has noticed that most people that did not qualify in UK, but they are practicing in UK, when they register with New Zealand, they come to Australia and they feel like it's lesser their registration standard. So, because they work hand in hand with New Zealand, I said to someone, you know, better be quick, stop dulling. Now that 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 pathway has changed, you need to write exam now, even if you are working in UK, unless you studied in UK. You see one thing: the same thing happened with support work, caregivers visa. So it has to do with scarcity. Remember when government announced that visa last year? Is because there is scarcity of skilled workers in aged care. But the scarcity is not like that because even that time, aged care home were closing. So government needed to do something. Most aged care homes were closing due to lack of staff. They needed to do something. So the government introduced that visa. And now that gap is closed. A lot of people in the UK utilize that opportunity to come in. Okay? So many people came in with that. And that was a fast visa. Boom, boom, boom. So now companies are saying that they employ people that are already in Australia. So that is the big challenge you are going to have. Okay? Now... Can you also watch my video on how to migrate to New Zealand as a caregiver? On my New Zealand playlist, watch that video and see if you should be looking for a job in New Zealand as a caregiver. Okay? Don't just put all your hope in Australia. Which can I help up? I've answered your question. <coughs> it has done two nominations. No, it's not usual. It's not usual. No, it's not. But I want you to know something. In, uh, um, Western Australia has become, it said, Western Australia has done two nominations in their website and they have done unsure. Is there usual? It's not usual, but I want to tell you something. At some point, this immigration year, Western Australia become hot cake. So people from even different other states are coming to grab Western Australia nomination because they have the highest nomination. And their nomination is certain, like, it's, it's guaranteed mostly for so many people. So many people from so many states now are jerry to come to WA. So they have a lot of onshore applicants. And remember, there is last year this thing. So we are hoping there will be offshore. There is no how every month they will do onshore. Onshore, once they reduce... The offshore applicants definitely offshore will show. Does it make sense, Justin? Yeah, so it is a lie. People like us came here with offshore now. We came with offshore WA nominated permanent resident. So there is no how. There is no how. Okay. Hello, ma'am. I'm about to booking for. My student visa, what is the processing time? Your agent, you're working with agents, ask your agent. It's four to six weeks, but it has changed. I don't know the state you are coming from, this country you are coming from. There is what is called high-risk country. If you're from high-risk country, can even reach four, four months, six months. So I don't know the country you're coming from before. It has to be the same thing for everybody, <coughs> but it has changed. Harris country goes longer. Um, I'm about to. Are you saying age care caregiver? No. Oh my God. I didn't say it has closed. 
Am I speaking Greek? I think I'm still speaking English. Please, people that listen to me, did I say that aged care caregiver visa for A2 has closed? No, I never said that. I said that it has changed in the sense that they do not need. I said, what has changed is the ability to get a job offshore because that gap has closed. That visa is still on until 2028. That's when the government, government, government plan is for 2024, 2028. Okay. So now you know how something happened, you bridge a gap. There will still be another scarcity. Just give it time. Because let me tell you why there will be another scarcity. You see this set of people that came in. When they get their permanent resident, they deviate to another job. Some of them will go to a different occupation. Some of them will even decide not to be working again. Okay. Give them time. There will be another scarcity. This is it. We have seen it happen. Okay. So, no, I didn't say it has stopped. Never. Never. It hasn't stopped. It's still ongoing. What else do you want me to talk, Benga? Benga, I have finished talking about it too. I have said a lot of things about it. <coughs> and what is MVQ3? Benga, what is MVQ3? What does it entail? No, do your skill assessment, but please know that skill assessment expires in two years. Now, you get people with the, with the with that visa came for Benga. Now, you get people they grab the caregiver visa visa. So, if you're there, you can good for you. You go get to. You go get. Now, people where they Nigeria, they Africa, Kenya, Zimbabwe, South Africa, self they get. Zimbabwe, self they go get. You know? I don't see people from South Africa get. I see people from from e -A -A -E -U, or what do they call them? Arab Emirates or something. Where my great day before, where they do care, they come. Okay? So, you can now, they fool here with that caregiver visa. So, when you go do your this, you know, and be shooting your shot. It never closed. No, it didn't close. Yes. He said, is Australia visa different from New Zealand? I mean, in giving it out. Okay. <coughs> yes, it's different. Oh my gosh, cough. I need cough lollies. Book color. How do I even say it? Australia, someone said, why is it that New Zealand don't have much population? Why can't they close that population gap with migration? Someone said, is migrant choice. I say it's a lie. A lot of people now have seen how beautiful New Zealand is. So many people want to migrate to New Zealand. Even people in UK, a lot of them move to New Zealand and stay, not like running away to go to Australia. They go there and they stay. But the thing is that New Zealand visa, their work visa, you must get a job. Unlike Australia, where you can go for visa 491, 190, 189 without a job offer. Does it make sense? good but new zealand you need to strike a job deal get a a, a a a job offer a contract before you can apply for your visa any of the work visa all of it i see some youtuber would dare you will write migrate to new zealand without a job i say you are joking you are talking nonsense <coughs> it is not possible so when you watch their video you find out they're showing you how to get a job so so that is the thing, the difference between the two visas, okay? No, you cannot. That is the funny part. But there is no harm in trying, you know. <clears throat> Let me tell you how I do my things. When I finish my notes, this person is asking me, can she use her skill assessment for aged care in Australia, Aqua, support worker, to apply. Can you people like my video, please? Like my video, please, like. Like, 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 before I start talking, like. I have a lot of people online, and my like is very short, very small. <clears throat> I need more likes. I, mm -hmm, keep coming, thank you. <coughs> Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. As I'm talking, I'm coughing and my throat is... Just give me some likes, please. Let me continue talking. 
Okay. Can you like my video, please? Like my video. So let's continue talking. Well done. Thank you. Keep going. Keep going. All right. <clears throat> Keep liking my video as we go. So this person is saying, can I use my skill, positive skill assessment I obtained in Australia as a caregiver to apply for New Zealand? There is no way it was written that you can do it. But I want to tell you something. There is advantage in that skill assessment you have done. Use it as you are searching for job in your CV. It should be the first thing standing out that you got positive skill assessment as blah, blah, blah. With <clears throat> Don't go and write aqua for them. Write it in full. Does it make sense? You guys are so fond of this nonsense abbreviation. Write it in full. Okay? Then... If they ask you to go and assess your qualification, then you know they have asked you. But right in in full, you have a positive skill assessment from Australia Commission, uh, Community Workers Association. And the date you obtained it. Go and look for a job, okay? So, <clears throat> New Zealand do what they call qualification evaluation, which I have made a video here on how to do it. But they don't assess short courses. And they don't assess experience. They assess qualifications. Does it make sense? Uh -huh. So, go look for job. First, there is no way they said you need to do skill assessment for your certificate. So, the certificate, they do something, is certificate obtained in the vocational or university or polytechnic. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay, so Jane, <coughs> Stanley is asking me a question. He said, Jane, I have a different question that I'd like to ask you. Why is Nigeria not considered an English-speaking country in some universities in Australia, but Kenya is considered as one? Well? <coughs> Stanley, let me tell you. The academic standard of Kenya is higher than that of us, Nigeria. No matter how we do it. I'm telling you the truth. A lot of things has a sad in Nigeria. Look at how universities are cropping up. Do you know how many universities are in Nigeria? Which country does that? Somebody go to their backyard, they open a university. Even in my state in Anambra, I can't even... When I was in Nigeria, the only university in Anambra state was Namda Zikiwe University. I am telling you now, I don't even know whether they're up to 20. I see them on Facebook. Someone will say this one. That's one. This one. Go to Abia State. Go to Yoruba side. Go to. How can even university be 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 more than the the towns in a country? Stanley, I'm answering your question. So Kenya, even Zimbabwe, their standard of education is higher than that of Nigeria. We can argue it from now. I'm a Nigerian too. But not true how they talk. Okay? Good. A lot of things like I said. However, so many Nigerians got admission. It depends on your course. Without English requirements as of last year. Especially people that are coming for business. Something in business. Something in public health and so on. Most of them did not write. If they're going to um, level one universities. Okay? Yeah. So Kenyans are still maintaining that they are standard. Stanley. Our own has rassad. Let me use a different word. Our standard has rassad. That is the thing. Okay? Yes. Hello. Sang, I hope I've answered your question. Is it not really alarming the amount of universities we have in Nigeria? So when you say that you are allowing universities from Nigeria. Now you need to go and start digging to know whether that university, now they have to go and do a separate research. Can you listen now? Now they go and do a separate research to check standard of the universities that are going to list in their website. So the best thing for them is to just cancel the whole country. 
because you will see one much room university come and be claiming real rights. So for the school, you know, so you got to say people from Nigeria not to write that English. They still need to go and check because we have some standard schools in Nigeria. So for them to be on the safer side, what do they do? They cut it off totally. Okay, Nika. If I'm applying for a job in Australia, how do I, I um um I include my skill assessment in my CV? Abba, let me tell you, when you do your CV, there is one they call is it personal statement or professional statement, or I don't know what they call it. When you introduce yourself, for example, that like this is a caregiver, wah, 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 obtain a positive skill assessment from blah, 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 on blah, 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 boom. Then when you start writing your qualifications, I'm talking if it's me. When you start writing your qualification, the first thing you write is, but I don't care where, where you belong. I need to shout it. Positive skill assessment, then authority. I will write the authority and write the date. Then I will, oh, that Australia, I will write it boldly. That is how you put it there and make your statement. They shouldn't be looking for it. You should be looking at them. Does it make sense? You should be looking at them. They shouldn't be finding it. You should find them. Thank you. That's how you put it. Okay. Masters in health management. Many people came here with that master's. Now, a lot of things has changed. So many people, even doctors, were coming here with it. When they come, they start writing their exam or they go do aged care as they are working, doing their master's. They are doing aged care. Then they write the exams. A lot of people did it, nurses, everybody in health. But, so, <laughs> I'm glad you understand what I mean by that. Thank you. But <clears throat> if it's before, I will say to you, come with it. It doesn't mean anything. The course they give you to come to Australia before, it doesn't matter. You come here, you can change it. You come here, you do something else. But now things are strict, okay? I should be asking you about your age, okay? Masters in health science, what is your age? If your age is about 35, when you come here, you should be looking for a job to work with your um the age care you are working for as a student. You're supposed to be working. Go and look for age care because they are still working limitless. Make sure you grab experience, make sure you ask them maybe they can do your sponsorship, give you for A2 visa. Okay, you can work for them. Because you're not going to get a job as a health manager with temporary visa. No. Nobody is going to employ someone as a manager when he's still having a temporary visa. If you're having a permanent visa, then you can go into management position. Okay? Unless it's like... I don't know how to put it. Government organization, they, before they put you in the managerial position, you have supposed to have permanent resident of that country. Okay. However, you can see private establishment anyways. I don't know what to say to you again. A lot has changed. Just like people talking about public health. There is no job you will get the right written public health. It's either health information, this health promotion, health, this health, that environmental and stuff. Okay. And those jobs are not the jobs you get so easily. If you are new in a country or you are not settled, you are not a permanent resident or a citizen. Okay, that's another thing. You are 38. You're almost there. You should be looking for 482. If you if you get a visa, if you get a visa to come, come. Because I always say that when you are inside a country, you will see that a lot of things will make sense to you. Okay. If you get a visa, come. If you come, even though you are studying, but your target is to settle, look for a company that when you are working for, they can sponsor you for 482. So that by the time you finish your two-year studies, you already acquired up to one-year experience with them, which will help them sponsor you for 482. So you know you are coming here to fight for your future. You're not just relaxing like a brother person that is just studying and waiting to graduate and grab a permanent a, 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 
a, a postgraduate work visa. You are here to hustle and get a visa sponsorship from a different employer before your graduation. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, I'm telling them. Every every backyard in Nigeria has a university. You guys don't know it will affect everybody. It will affect everybody. You know that time when you can count UNN, UNIZIC, UNILAG, LASU, Mobafemi, Awolawo University. You can count them like that's then. Nigeria University is still gang game. Outside is still gang game. Like gang game. Now, Okay, K University, um, and Toby University. Babangida, Babangida is even a big name. Bankola University is everywhere in Nigeria. So, for the country, developed country, to be saved from all this drama, they will just cut the whole country out because they are not ready to go and be assessing those universities one by one and say. In Nigeria, if you are from, they will list these ones. If you are from this, this, this. No, they take everything away. Chuck it away. You see, when a bad thing is happening in a country and no one is talking about it, all the big people, rich men in Nigeria are opening university because I think that's where the money is now. Everybody's opening school. School fees is high rocketing. Nobody's monitoring their school fees. So that's where they make money from. They push their school fees and get government allocation too and everything is going up. So is another or you or you mail for them money making machine or whatever they call it. Can I study myself as a social worker as a lawyer here in Nigeria? Yes, you can. Are you ready to get your um IELTS? It's seven 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 seven. No cap. Nothing less than seven in all bands. <clears throat> yes, you can, but that course is very competitive. But if you have a good qualification, good grade, and get your seven seven, your your your, your visa agent will be able, study visa agent will be able to run it for you. Yes, it's possible. Yeah, because it's almost in the same. Yeah, there is similarity there. Zena, I've answered your question. <clears throat> Thank you for this live chat. Please, HND holder in community health technology. The community health technology. I want to become a registered. Take take that one. I want to become a registered nurse and to get. Well, please. <clears throat> Amarachi. HND holder in community health technology. But I want to become a registered nurse and to get work. Please, how do I go about it? Do you want to become a registered nurse in Nigeria, in Australia? You cannot become a registered nurse in Australia without qualification now. Community health technologist. So what you do is that you go do bachelor degree in nursing, BSc. That's what Australia takes. So if you're coming to Australia, you're going to start BSc, like year one, year two, year three. Nursing here, BSc nursing is three years. Some school do it three and a half years. If you are still young, you're going to do BSc. BSc, not in H your HND doesn't change anything. You can go to Masters of Nursing or anything. You're going to do Bachelor Degree in Nursing three years. If it's midway three, three and a half, or if you are combining it, or some school is just doing a three and a half or three, depending on the schools. That's what you are going to do if you want to become a nurse in Australia. You're going to Bachelor Degree, so that whatever qualification you have now will not have any effect on you. That, however, it can help to push your application because you already have background in health. Amarachi doesn't make sense. Okay. Mary, you are welcome. My husband has been trying to apply for construction job on Indeed, but the major challenge is the issue of white card. Does it mean that one can get the job of a construction supervisor or related? Does it mean that one can get is it going for a supervisor? He said, Uche, I need to give me your last sentence. Does it mean that one can or cannot? Just write to me. Let me know whether you mean can or cannot. Because that question, that sentence is reading can. 
does it mean that one can get the job of construction or does it mean that one cannot get please can you just write whether you mean can or cannot okay does this mean that one can't get good i get it because just <coughs> that white card a lot of people are asking about that white card that white card the government has not made it possible for people to get it from outside they have not and that is a very big obstacle okay they haven't but the thing is that people that come here as students can grab it even as a visitor you can go grab it because even in secondary school they're asking they're begging the kids to get it but they don't want so it's very easy card to get but you cannot get it from outside of Australia. And that is what the government has not addressed because they have not given it access to private individual. It's being monitored by the government. Australian government is still the person organizing the training. So they haven't uh, um, given it access to in, uh, a private individual. That's why it has, you can't get it from outside of Australia. But once you're inside of Australia, it doesn't matter the visa you are holding, people can get it, okay? So if you're applying for a job that needs it, some jobs will say they will help you. They will support you to get it. Okay? Maybe you haven't seen any job like that. They will say access to white card. So they will support you access to white card. What some people will say, will list it as that you must have it. So that is it. Now it's in Australia. Even secondary school kids are asking them to get, but they don't want to go into construction. So, no, Max Farm class. After studies in New Zealand, do I need to write another English test before settling in the country? New Zealand is not strict with that English like Nigeria. And I think I haven't explored that question. I think I need to go explore it. Because in Australia, for you to apply for postgraduate work visa, you need to go write English. But in New Zealand, I am not sure whether you need to write English again for you to apply for the um, postgraduate work visa. I need to explore that question, okay? <clears throat> I have explained on Australia Visitor Visa, we cannot go back to it again for the purpose of this life today. Sorry, we can't go back. We've done it, Rosemary. You can watch the beginning, okay? The beginning of this live section, you will hear about the Visitor Visa. Thank you so much. Social work is my first choice and policy analyst is mine. Please come out of policy analyst, Zainab. Come out from the policy analyst. I beg you in the name of God. You're not analyzing any policy. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. That cannot settle you. Come out from it. Choose something else. Come out from that policy analyst. That job is not for you yet. It's for you later when you are settled and know the system. Please, I beg you, Zainab, up. Come out. Run away from it. All these names, big, big names. You will ask yourself who will employ you. Which policy are you analyzing? Government policy with you, a temporary migrant. I hope I've made it clear to you. Apply for caregiver journey. Debbie, we have talked about it. We've talked about this um, caregiver job and we've said about the challenges that we are having. One thing you guys know to know is that a job can never be open forever and ever. When there is a gap in skill, it closes. Because there is something that will happen. They open the door, people come, that gap will close. It cannot be forever. However, it can close and reopen. Just like I said in the beginning of this video, I said most people that came with a caregiver visa since last year, Give them two years. Let them get their permanent residence. Some of them will fall out of that job. Some of them will find something else. Some of them will retire. Some of them will not want to do caregiver. There will be another gap. We have seen this thing happen. Okay? So for now, 
most of the company have closed the gap for now. So that's the challenge everybody will keep having. People that have skill assessment have not even gotten the job mid-run. And you're talking about having it. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. When you're talking, uh, um, Amarachi, I don't know the kind of job you're going to get to. Australia job is not about qualification alone. But what you people do when you ask me a question, you talk about your qualification. No one gives a hoot about your qualification without experience when it comes to finding a job. Okay, and I've said it so many times. But when you guys ask me a question, do you think an, a, a, an overseas employer will spend their money to bring someone without experience to go and start training them from ABC? Even if they are training someone, the person will have a basic knowledge of the job they are doing, is it not? So why would someone with their money to bring you over when you have only qualification without experience. It doesn't happen. Put yourself in that employer's shoe. So when you ask me a question about your getting a job, stop telling me only your qualification. Tell me about your experience. With how many years experience in that occupation? So I'm already, I'm not going to answer that question until it's complete. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Uche, because of this age, he can't do his master's there. He is 36 years and understand that with he can. If he's 36 and he has the granting visa, let him come. I've made so many videos here to explain this thing. There is no how you will be in a country, in this our Australia, you go home. I have said so many pathways, and I even talk about the Dama agreement. If they give this person visa and his status, he wants to come and do master, let him come. He is a Nigerian man. Let him come here and sort himself out, which I'm not, not going to answer anything about it. Go find my visa videos where I talk about alternatives. Even I made a short also. I posted a short too to tell people that are always clamoring about postgraduate work visa. That is not the only way to settle. There are other visa sponsorship you can grab. A student visa gave you opportunity to work and have Australia experience. You are doing masters for two years. That one is certain. Even if you are working part time, two years equivalent of part time is one year. Why can't you use to grab a job sponsorship? There is no job sponsorship that said they cannot employ a graduate of Australia. No. Or someone that has Australia experience. If they give him visa 39 years, let him come. Because Uche, work age in Australia for migration is 45, not 35. That 35 is just for one attachment visa. One attachment visa, the way people are talking about it, like is a big deal. One attachment visa, one visa that you also have other opportunities, which J. Kenis has explained. If they give him visa, let him come. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know if he settle, find himself now, make him go, at least he get Australia qualification, make him go back to Nigeria, go <laughs> use Australia qualification, go work. <laughs> have four years experience working now. Look at Amarachi. Amarachi, if I slap you now, I slap you out of my life. I will slap you out of my life. You said, I have four years experience working in the hospital. As what? This is how you people write your CVs. This is how you write your cover letter. I have four years experience working in the hospital. I have four years experience teaching. You think the team will come and call you? Amarachi, which hospital? What did you work in the hospital as a secretary? As, as a cleaner? Okay. As a cleaner? As a nurse, or were you a doctor there? Amarachi, can you please explain to me and write to me again? Thank you, Amarachi. Also, please, I have a master's in 
peace and development studies. What do, um, Uche, you are not getting any job with peace and development studies. We are not looking for peacemakers here. <laughs> Uche, Uche, we are not looking for peacemakers in Australia. Peace and development studies. I don't know that there's a course like that. Does he associate with pastor, pastor Reiki or something? Peace and development. Okay, people that peacemakers that go to countries where there are wars and stuff. There is none here now. Greeting, ma'am. Thank you for your effort. I'm into hospitality and have 22 years experience in industry. I don't know what is hospitality. You don't ask me this kind of question. Hospitality is huge. I am into teaching. I have 200 years experience in teaching. Teaching, I will ask you, what are you teaching? Primary school or secondary school? Which subject are you teaching? Tony, we don't answer that kind of question here. If you want to ask questions, be specific and tell me what you have, what you are doing in hospitality, your qualification. Hospitality is a huge industry. Are you a manager? Are you a chef? Are you a server? Are you a what? Please, do they have any pathway for those in transportation industry? There is a transportation occupation in the skill occupation list. But I need to be honest with you. Um, Patricia, that's not something someone from offshore can get. No, it's not. It's not one of those. I just need to be honest with you. It's not. These are something they give people that are inside. What kind of visa can I use to locate to Australia? Okay. <clears throat> what kind of a visa do I use to um, locate to Australia? I'm a nurse. I can't do skill assessment. I can't even afford it. You're a nurse. You're a nurse. You can't afford skill assessment. Can I give a visa? You still need to do skill assessment. That job is not even guaranteed. So, because that's where you are sitting. The two options you have, skill assessment, even the second option, I won't advise you to go through it because the job here now is not forthcoming. Okay? That's it. Law is not an option in not. A friend had to switch to social work. A friend had to switch to social work after she got. Yeah, that's an option. Social worker will help you and it will settle you quicker. Zainab, I think we have settled that option now. How to get internship visa for pharmacists? There is nothing like internship visa. Okay. There is a visa that is training visa. I think it's visa 400 or 407. I'm not sure, but I made a video about training visa. Okay. When you want to do internship, it's like you're also looking for a job. Does it make sense? So you need to find a company where you will do internship. They will bring you over with a, with a training visa. Does it make sense? So they will bring you over with a training visa. Okay, so there is no visa that is called internship visa. Mm, check here. I think it's the old. No, why? For who? No. It's finished. <laughs> check here. No, no. Inside the, open the drawer. Look inside and see if you can find the key. Okay. Okay. All right, please. Which kind of visa can I use to relocate to Australia? My nose, we've answered that one. No, no, leave it. No, bring it out. In addition, I have an international chaplain certificate from 
international chaplain certificate, please, what, where can you walk? Uche. Even in Nigeria, someone with international certificate, where does he work? He's not pastoring. I just want to know. How can you get internship visa? I've asked an internship visa as a nurse. Amarachi, you said you have HND in health, health technology, and you work in the hospital as a nurse. Health technology. That one passed me. How can a health technologist be a nurse? Are you a registered nurse? Or what type of nurse? Are you not supposed to register with Nigeria Nursing Board? Amarachi, that's one past me. Are you not the person that say you have HND in health technology? How did you end up practicing as a nurse? I don't know. There is um Tony, there is um this thing for hospitality managers. You say you're a catering manager for 22 years into the round from chef to currently a catering manager. There is a job for hospitality manager, but catering or being a chef will give you visa sponsorship quicker than a manager because they always have manager inside but they bring if you go to seek australia indeed there are a lot of visa sponsorship job for chef but not for hospitality managers excuse me Uh, you can search for that, those jobs, which you can search for them all. Go to Seek Australia and search for them. I haven't seen anyone come with something like that. Chaplaincy. Because there's a lot of people that can do that in, in, on shop to be a chaplain and stuff. Okay? You can you can still look for that job. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to say because of Nigeria Con. I know that I don't want to do it. Is there no other? There is no other, Ngozi. I'm so sorry. I thought as much. I thought that, that is your problem. That is affecting so many people. There is no other unless you want to come to study and not mention that you are practicing. Then you stand as if you have your bachelor degree in nursing, but you're not practicing. You want to do your master's. But as long as you're a nurse, that clearance must, be, must go through your nursing board. Okay. Yeah, if you have checked it and it's there, you can go through the process. At administration. At administration. It doesn't ring a bell. If you if you want to go through it, you can go through it. One ninety one eight nine. That's a permanent resident visa. And competitive. Did you check the visa where I did it? Okay, how do I even put it? If your husband is going to one eight nine, please make sure that his IELTS is up to eight seven eight, and he has had years of experience. If he's going for one ninety, can you check if there is any states that need at administration? Before you start the whole process, please. Okay, watch my video on 190 so that you can check those states. I've dropped their link. Before you embark on this thing, try to make your order. Because you feel grab your skill assessment, then there is no state that has it in their list or something. Then you'll be stranded. Okay. Oh, Sheba, I don't know what happened. Maziba. I don't know what happened. 
Why did they bail? Maybe they don't. Maybe they didn't want to sponsor. But they know you are offshore. If you tell them you can sponsor yourself, it's fine. It doesn't prevent you if you have the money. You can make the offer. However, it's risky. Because if it's a scam, they will scam you. So, Sheba, that is the risk there. If you tell them you can sponsor yourself, if they are scammers, they will scam you. If you are going to sponsor yourself, it means that you are going to pay the visa from your end. Anybody can pay for visa online. So you don't give them the money. You pay it in the government website. So if they say bring the money, you don't bring the scam. Shepard, I hope I've answered your question. And you can do your skill assessment, apply for permanent um, independent visa like 491 or 190. If you're not getting visa sponsorship and you have money, okay? The thing is that Uche, the chef you are in Nigeria is different from the chefing they are doing here. So many Nigerians, I have to be honest with you. That's why you're not getting anything. Because chefs keep coming, they are coming, their job is everywhere. Now, there are so many Nigerians as chef I have seen. Last year, I know about three people that came, but let me tell you the truth. They didn't come from Nigeria. Those people, they have, they stayed in Dubai. They work in a big hotels in Dubai. And um, there is this, con con this country in, in United Arab Emirates. What do they call it? So, their food type is similar to what you see here, okay? So it's hard for someone that chef in Nigeria, Africa. I've seen Kenyan too come, but that Kenyan work in a one international company in Kenya as a chef, okay? So these are the things they check in your CV because you're actually coming to cook. It's a practical something, okay? It's not mostly something with knowledge. So you being used to their food and stuff, and again, when you do your visa, how did you do it? Did you mention foods, continental food dishes you can cook and stuff, or just a basic CV? So that could be the obstacle you are having. Okay. Actually, that could be the obstacle you are having. Just like hairdressers. I say to people from Nigeria, stop applying for those hairdressers' job. You won't get it. Because you're not coming here to do black people's hair. So those companies, hairdressing companies, are big companies in Australia. They're always looking for visa sponsorship. They're looking for people that can do white people's hair. Okay. That's an example. So when they compare the food you cook in Nigeria and what you'll be cooking for them in their restaurant and this thing here is not the same. I hope that makes sense. All right. Oh my gosh, it's one hour plus live section. I am tired. I've been talking for one hour plus. I am done. Guys, I'm tired before I fall off here and die. Eh? I am I am tired. The question is coming too much. Oh, please put your notification button. If I haven't answered your question today, put your notification button. I'm coming again this weekend and I will answer them. Okay? I'm tired. Now what guy could they come from? I am tired. Thank you guys. We'll call it a night for now, okay? It's more than one hour I've been talking. I am tired. Okay? I love you guys, but we'll leave. We'll go to come back again. All right? Thank you.